Welcome to Google's Colab. We use Colab to interact with files we call notebooks, which is actually short for what are known as Jupyter, that is Jupyter with a Y, not an I, notebooks, which are interactive documents that we will use in our course containing rich narrative text, multimedia, and live code that are all completely editable by the user. A notebook file has a file extension of .ipynb, which is short for Interactive Python Notebook. This is what Jupyter Notebooks used to be called when they were first developed for Python. However, thanks to Project Jupyter, notebooks can now be used for over 40 programming languages. So we refer to these more generally as Jupyter Notebooks, or just Notebooks for short, to emphasize the more inclusive nature of these notebook documents. We will discuss the contents of notebooks in a future video. For now, we simply explore the Colab environment a bit and show you how to find, load, save, and organize your notebooks. When you visit Colab, you should be greeted with a screen that looks like this, with what appears to be a type of pop-up window that shows the recent notebooks you have opened. If this is your first time in Colab, then you should see the Welcome to Collaboratory notebook, which you will notice is also open in the background. Let's go to this notebook for just a moment by either selecting Welcome to Collaboratory right here, or hitting cancel or just clicking elsewhere to access the notebook that's open in the background because the Welcome to Collaboratory notebook is already there. So now that we're here, suppose I made changes to this notebook that I wanted to save. Well, if I try to save this document by pressing either Control S on my keyboard, as I did right there, or by going to File and selecting Save, you will see that I cannot save the changes. This is because I have no permission to save this notebook since the notebook's actually hosted somewhere else on Google Colab. In order for me to keep any changes I might make, I need to make a copy of the notebook. If I select the option, save a copy in Drive, then a copy is actually made in my Google Drive. We will return to these steps in a bit as they pertain to obtaining and editing notebooks stored in a GitHub repo. But for now, we close this new tab and we go to File and Open Notebook to bring back the original pop-up window and explore the other options available to find and load notebooks within Colab. One thing you will notice right away is that the copy of the Welcome to Collaboratory notebook now appears in our recent notebook files. And there are two new icons in the row showing the notebook's information. First, the icon on the left of this new file name is that of Google Drive, which indicates the notebook is stored in my Google Drive. This information is also shown by hovering your cursor over the icon, as I just showed you. On the right-hand side, we see a little folder icon with the Google Drive icon within it. Hovering the cursor over this icon tells us that by clicking on it, we will view the file in Google Drive. We will come back to viewing notebooks in Google Drive later in this video. If we select the file name itself, this will load the notebook over the notebook in the current tab, which has the original Welcome to Collaboratory notebook, or we could select this other icon, which has a little square with an arrow pointing to the upper right, and that would open the notebook in a new tab. That's something that you'll often want to do if you want to keep multiple notebooks open at the same time, especially if you're comparing changes you've made to that of an original notebook that you made a copy of. The Examples option shows notebooks provided by Colab. The Markdown Guide is probably the most useful one for those of you that are just getting started working with Jupyter Notebooks. Markdown is a lightweight markup language for creating formatted text using a plain text editor. In another video, we go over our own examples of how to use Markdown, including a rather extensive example notebook that I created showing how to use LaTeX, or Tech for short, to produce beautiful looking mathematical statements within your Markdown text. The Google Drive option will show any notebooks you will currently have saved on your Google Drive. If this is your first time using Colab, then you will probably not see any notebooks in here unless you are following along with this video, in which case the copy of the Welcome to Collaboratory notebook appears. The Upload option allows you to choose a notebook to upload from your computer. You can click on the Choose File to open a file browser that allows you to select a file to upload, 
Or if you have a file browser open elsewhere, you can simply drag and drop a file to upload here. Last but certainly not least is the GitHub option. To access most of the files in the videos I am creating, you should use the GitHub option. This is an amazing feature in Colab that allows you to search repositories, also referred to as repos, on GitHub that contain notebooks. GitHub is commonly used to host open source software development projects. At the time of making this video, GitHub has reported over 80 million developers contributing to more than 200 million repos, with more than 28 million of those repos being public, meaning that anyone can access and view the contents. Many repos actually contain notebooks, showing tutorials on various software packages, as well as other tutorial or lecture materials for data science or statistical and mathematical concepts and projects. While you can search repos directly for notebooks by putting in the GitHub URL, you can also search by organization or user. The Department of Mathematical and Statistical Sciences at CU Denver is committed to developing and disseminating OER, which stands for Open Educational Resources. As part of a Colorado Department of Higher Education OER institutional grant, the department has created an organization on GitHub called CU Denver MathStats OER. Specifically, that's capital CU dash Denver with a capital D dash MathStats with a capital M and S dash OER. Searching by that organization allows you to view all of the repos we have created within this organization, which will continue to grow over time. In this video, we will look at the Programming for Data Science repo. Upon selecting that repo, you should notice all the notebooks available within it, and that the icon associated with these notebooks is that of the GitHub's default icon. The next video starts with the 01 lecture notebook, so we select that notebook, which is found here, which immediately loads the notebook into the current browser tab. An important thing to notice is that the GitHub icon still shows up next to the notebook name at the top left of the screen. If you hover your cursor over this icon, it will inform you that the notebook is stored in GitHub. What does this mean exactly? Well, it means that you can run this notebook and even edit this notebook, but you cannot save the notebook, just like we saw before with the Welcome to Collaboratory notebook. The first thing you should do when getting a notebook from GitHub that you intend to explore, especially if the notebook is for a course you are taking, is to make a copy of the notebook that is stored in your Google Drive. And again, Google refers to Google Drive simply as Drive. So by pressing Control S on my keyboard to save, I'm given the option to save a copy in Drive, much like we saw before. Now, when we look at the top left of the notebook contents where we see the name and the icon, we see that the icon has changed and it says that the notebook is stored in Google Drive and the name has also changed. It is now the copy of this 01 lecture notebook. If we save this file, and you'll see it already said that it was saved at 4.01 p.m. when I'm creating this video, but if I press Control S on my keyboard, you'll notice it is saving and that save was successful. So now we can edit and change this notebook and the changes are saved on our Google Drive. If you want, you can go ahead and close the other tab containing the original notebook, but we're gonna keep this open for now. And in fact, very often you will wanna keep open the original tab with a notebook you couldn't save changes to in order to compare the changes you've made in your copy. For our purposes, I am leaving it open for now to help show how we should organize files from a repo on Google Drive. At this point, I recommend changing the name of the file, the copy file, to 01 underscore lecture. You can do that by simply clicking where the name of the file is, taking the part you want to change, and changing it. It's that simple. Now the file name has been changed to 01 underscore lecture dot IPYNB. I can now save it, and the saving has been successful. And this is matching the same file name as it appeared in the repo. The reason this is a good idea is because repos containing many notebooks, much like the Programming for Data Science uh, repo, may have files or links 
that depend on proper file names and structure of the files in terms of their organization and folders as they originally appear in the repo to ensure proper functionality. As was just mentioned, repos may have notebooks or other files organized into various folders and subfolders in that repo. And some things may not work correctly if we deviate from that file structure. Thus, we should also organize the files on our drive in an identical way to ensure that everything works as intended. We therefore conclude this video by showing how to locate and organize your notebooks within your drive. However, we may not remember the location of the notebook within the repo when we loaded it from GitHub. To find this information, go back to the tab containing the original notebook that was loaded from GitHub. Go to File and select View on GitHub. This will open up the file location within GitHub, and you can then see exactly which folders were named or nested within the repo that contained that notebook. This will help us in setting up the Google Drive folder structure where we should place the copy of our notebook that's shown here. We now discuss how to set up the folders within your Google Drive that mirror the folder structure seen on this repo where we have a programming for data science main folder, the name of the repo, and then the subfolders of lectures and assignments, 01 Jupyter with some dashes between the words, lectures, and then finally the file that we made the copy of contained within the lectures subfolder. To do this, first go to file and locate in drive. Now I've gone ahead and started the folders structure. I've already created it. To do that, all you do is select the new option and new folder, and then you name it. That's it. And so I've already done this where I did programming for data science with the dashes between them. I've already created it, so I don't need to do it again. And I can just drag and drop the file within there, and I've already created the other subfolders, so I'll just drag and drop 01 uh, lecture and put it into lectures and assignments. I will also drag and drop it here into 01 Jupyter, and then from there I will drag and drop it into lectures. Now that's one way you can do it. If you have the folder structure already set up, you can also just right click on the file and you can say move to, and it will allow you to navigate the folder structure you already have within Google Notebooks, uh, or Colab Notebooks, excuse me. And so that would have been perhaps a faster way for me to do it, but I just want to point out drag and dropping also works, but this would have been definitely an easier way for me to go about doing it. So I recommend you always follow these steps for each notebook you create a copy of from GitHub, because that will help you keep your files organized and ensure the proper functionality of all files. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Check out the next video that introduces the contents of that 01 lecture notebook, as well as various collab features available for exploring notebooks.